What do taxes, farmers in Pennsylvania, and George Washington have to do with whiskey? Let's find out. And welcome to Whiskey History, where we discuss the rich and colorful history of whiskey. I'm your professor, Bourbon Barry. Let's get started. Okay, let's set the scene. It's 1791. George Washington is serving his first term of president. The Constitution has been recently ratified, and the United States is still feeling out the structure between centralized government and the powers of the states. Now keep in mind, before the ratification of the Constitution, the United States was operating under the Articles of Confederation, which was more like the European Union, where each state had power and there was very little power in the centralized government. With the ratification of the Constitution, more power was now shifted to a centralized government. And this change was really important because the United States had amassed massive debts from fighting the Revolutionary War, and without the ability to raise taxes and funds, there was no way to pay back these debts. And in 1791, the whiskey tax was the first tax levied on a domestic product by the new federal government. But as you can imagine, this tax didn't sit well with farmers in western Pennsylvania. Back then, farmers were used to taking their surplus grains and distilling them into whiskey and actually using it as currency. And also keep in mind that many of these farmers were veterans of the Revolutionary War who fought under the principles of no taxation without representation. But on the other hand, the federal government maintained that taxation was a legal part of congressional taxation powers. So here we have on one hand, this newly formed federal government exercising their new powers to levy taxes versus an independent group of farmers who don't want to be taxed. And not only did the Pennsylvania farmers not pay their taxes, they went as far as attacking the home of the local tax inspectors. So George Washington, old, arthritic, nearly toothless George Washington, put on his uniform, mounted his horse, and raised an army to ride out to Western Pennsylvania to put down this rebellion. But thankfully, the rebels all went home before the arrival of the army, and there was no confrontation. The Whiskey Rebellion demonstrated that the newly formed government had the power and the will to suppress violent insurrections. Although in states like Pennsylvania and Kentucky, that whiskey tax remained exceedingly difficult to collect. Ultimately, the whiskey tax was repealed in the early 1800s under the Jefferson administration. Historians maintain that this episode actually strengthened U.S. nationalism because people appreciated how well Washington handled the rebels without having to resort to tyranny. So the next time you pick up a Pennsylvania rye, think about the rich history and tradition behind it. I'm your professor, Bourbon Barry. Thanks for watching.